welcome to the Sheffield documentary panel. It's sadly not quite as good as the real deal, but I'm sure our terrible internets will be um, pretty much as close. Today, we're going to be looking at new and emerging documentary talent in the North. The aim is to try and figure out how we find talented people in the North, and then when we do, how we make sure there's enough incentive for them to actually stay in the Northern regions. With a load of regional development initiatives and schemes and different broadcasters continuing to move to hubs in the regions, there seems to be more opportunity than ever But what happens when those schemes come to an end and how much are those schemes actually helping in the first place? Well, today we have the panel of a lifetime to help us answer those questions. I'll be cheering it. I'm Ben Zand. I'm a filmmaker originally from Liverpool. Um, I spent many years struggling to, to try and make my career work in, in Liverpool and eventually succumb to the inevitable, which was to move to London. From the BBC, we have Emily Smith. She commissioned singles and series across all BBC channels. Um, Emily's also the BBC's factual department commissioning lead for the North and Midlands. Hello, Emily. How's it going? Did I did I get that right? I I, uh, I think you're on mute. The Zoom faux pas. I know. <laughs> I know. It's only been seven months. You know, can't get it right still. Um, yeah, I think you got it completely right. Yeah, I'm, I'm a part of the factual commissioning team specifically in the docs department and I also am the lead for the department for the north and the midlands so I'm a bit, bit of a champion I'm from Leeds and it's something that you know growing and finding and keeping talent is something that I really care about amazing I love it it's like a big reveal every time I say someone's name they just pop out of the screen uh, from channel four we ha also have Victoria Roy Victoria is the channel's nations and regions talent exec. Bic works closely with the newly established four skills and indies outside of London, helping them attract and retain high potential diverse thinkers for Channel 4 commissions. She's also the mastermind behind the TV Talent North Facebook group. We'll talk about that more later. Hello, Victoria. How's it going? Do you want to show your face? Yeah, no, I'm here. I hope. Can everyone see me? Good. Yeah, good. Uh, yeah, that was perfect. I think, yeah, I think so. Yeah, thanks. I've, I've recruited into Channel 4 about 18 months ago now. I hope for my knowledge of talent in the nations and regions, as obviously they were very London focused. Um, so kind of charged with finding that new generation of commissioners in, in the nations and regions. And you are an official northerner. You are actually from Can the you north. hear? Can you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Manchester. <laughs> Oh, great. All right. Um, uh, okay, next we've got Stuart Freud. Freud? I actually don't know how you pronounce your second name, Stuart. I'm sorry. Uh, he's a Manchester based multi award winning series director who's worked on some of the UK's most talked about factual television series, including Ambulance and Reported Missing for the BBC. And he's currently working on a new series for Netflix. Hello, Stuart. How's it going? Hi, Ben. How you doing? Thank you for having us. <laughs> it's Freud, by the um, way. But nice. I get really disappointed. Freud, sorry. Is that I get disappointed if people get it right, so you're fine. That's... I'm sorry. Is that Scottish? Is that, is that a Scottish name? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, I don't know, like Viking name originally, I think, but yeah. But I can, I can definitely take on Vic's Northern so you, credentials. So... <laughs> <laughs> so you're from, um, so you moved from London to Manchester. So you're, you're kind of like a Northern import. Yeah, so I've sort of split my, I've split my career right down the middle. So I spent eight years, like, starting in TV. I was at Bournemouth University and then eight years in London and then moved up and I've had, what well, is eight years now, um, up in Manchester. So I've sort of had a feel of both sides of the industry, really. Great. I'm going to get a bit more into, like, your personal story in a second. Um, next, we've got Persephone Rifsey. Persephone is a freelance AP who works on documentary, factual and factual entertainment productions for a range of broadcasters, including um, documentaries like My Mates a Muslim and the critically acclaimed Hometown A Killing. And she's currently working on Channel 4's flagship magazine show, Steph's Packed, Packed Lunch. Uh, she also got a um, recent commission to make a single for the BBC. We'll be seeing a clip of that in a little bit. Hello, Persephone. Nice to see you. Hi everyone, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. And yeah, like Ben said, I am um, a freelance producer. I've worked across different broadcasters, primarily focused on factual, factual entertainment, and I'm from Huddersfield. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So do you are you are you currently still live in Huddersfield? You have not had to I have not been to London yet. 
yeah no I've not made that mistake like you Ben I've not gone to London and come back and actually to be I fair, know. I'm a traitor I did the university, but it wasn't my first choice. Salford was my first choice. And actually, in my second year, I decided to move oh. back to the north and um, bid for Salford University, and I got in. So there you go. Amazing. I went to uni in Edinburgh, Edinburgh Napier, which is, you know, that is pretty north by the calculations of, of geography. But um, great. All right, cool. I'll introduce our final guest, who is Harry Loft. How's it going, Harry? So Harry's an in-house shooting researcher at the Leeds-based Indie Candor Productions. Since right. joining the company on a six-month scholarship, he's filmed and edited the Spares film, Fighting Shame, series edited How Not to Die for BBC Three, and he filmed on the BAFTA-nominated The Family Secrets. How's it going, Harry? Very nice to meet you. Hi, you Ben. You're right. Hello, everyone. Yeah, good. It's all right. Um, yeah, as you said, um, varied sort of role at Canda, um, but I've thoroughly enjoyed my first sort of few years in TV. Um, from the Midlands originally, but I've moved to Leeds and just not gone home yet, but I'm loving it, so it's all good. Woo! Well, because it... It would be good to, oh, actually, I just need to remind people that we um, we are doing a Q&A, so you can send questions in at any point. We also have closed captioning available, um, which is pretty impressive, I think. Um, let's see if they can keep up with our, our fast words. Um, and yeah, all right, so Harry, it'd be good to um, start with you, actually, because you seem like you've done a lot in a really short space of time um, in Leeds. You know, what's it like? What do you do on a daily basis? How have you found the experience? Of, of working and operating out of Leeds? Yeah, I mean, it's been brilliant. Um, a day-to-day -day is so varied, so it's very rare that a week will look the same, as I'm sure it is with a lot of people here today. Um, you know, going from just research and development one day to going away for a week, actual shooting, and then being back in like an edit or helping an editor, um, you know, in an edit assistant role. So I've been quite lucky in that my role has been, it's, I've been able to do loads of different little things just to get more experience. And that's really what I'm trying to do. Um, you know, I came straight out of uni um, into this. I've been doing this two and a half years now. It's my first sort of proper job. Um, and so being able to get all the different varying roles has been, it's been invaluable, really. And were you surprised when you, um, when you came out of uni and, and Leeds was the destination, not London? Yeah, pleasantly surprised. I, you know, went to all, all of my uni choices were Northern, which I was sort of happy to be moving up from the Midlands, um, went to Leeds and it was great. I love Leeds and it was great to be able to stay. Um, I have got a few friends that I was at uni with that have moved to London and I don't envy them at all. I think their rent's three times mine. So I'm very happy to be in Leeds for that. And um, just the people are just lovely and the production company that I've been so lucky to be part of um, it's been so welcoming so it's it's really worked out and been it's been really great so far and Persephone just to ask you a, a couple of questions which just before we get into kind of meaty bit with Emily and Victoria I suppose but what what's it like working in Huddersfield you know how do you find the opportunities that are available in regards to productions so for me, it's, I've had quite a varied experience. I've been lucky enough to actually have learned when I lived in London that, you know, you've got to be quite fast paced and it's quite a competitive industry in general, but then coming to the North um, and then having, feeling like I've got a lack, there's a lack of opportunity here. It's very much about putting yourself forward and just having that mindset that you're going to go get that job. You're going to go get that opportunity. You're going to go out and network with people. And that's what it's been. And that's it for me. Um, but I would say that I've actually been quite lucky because I've had various different opportunities across television and film and radio and also being in front of the camera and behind the camera. Um, no day is the same you just got to throw yourself into it and I, to be honest I love it yeah it's, it's quite interesting because I suppose like you know I um I got into the tv world and like after uni 2012 or something and um and I just couldn't get any work in Liverpool at that point and I suppose that's what eventually led me to be um you know, uh, a southern import in that sense. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm envious of you that you've managed to make it work. I'm really impressed in that sense. Um, I mean, Stuart, how have you found the the increasing of opportunities of in, in Manchester? Have, have things changed over the years? Are you, uh, yeah, are you getting definitely. more work than you you did it originally? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, so I'm, I moved up for 2012. I moved up to Manchester, and it definitely felt like. 
um, you know, it was different than in London. You know, part of that is obviously you don't know any of the production companies, so you're going, you know, you're sort of starting again. But since then, it has felt like it's moved on. So things like um, Ambulance moving up, which I, you know, series direct and looked after the Manchester and Liverpool kind of series, series five of that. Um, and that is then returning next year. You've got uh, 24 and a and e is kind of cutting up um, north. And it, fe- it does, you know, there, I'm aware of lots of initiatives and, you know, like the Talent North Forum that Vic has been part of kind of setting up, I think is really kind of helping. And it does, it feels like there's a genuine kind of push into the regions, I think. Uh, but, you know, it does, there's certainly not the same opportunities as if you were to live in London. That's just the fact. Uh, but it does feel like there is kind of, you know, there is a bit more and there's a genuine desire for indies um, and I think channels to sort of try and you know help and make it you know make it work great well, I think it'd be cool to talk to you uh, Emily and Victoria just to get a sense of of how things are, are changing up north you know so channel four moved to Leeds and regional commissioning targets across all broadcasters have increased um, and the nations and regions seem like they are potentially on the cusp of, of some kind of renaissance. As well as that, there's been uh, the appointment of two Leeds-based factual commissioners in Channel 4's new headquarters and the BBC's regional focus development schemes um, have come into place. I suppose, but despite this, there's documentaries, especially, especially factual documentaries, are largely still produced in London. So it would be, Victoria, just to start with you, uh, how in regards to Channel 4 are opportunities changing um, in the North for filmmakers and, and upcoming talents? I think we've got a clip to show in a second. So maybe yeah. after you answer, we can show that clip. Uh, I'll start by saying I used to be a commissioning, uh, not commissioning exec, I wish, uh, a talent exec at the BBC. And in 2012, when Stuart moved up, I think the best thing I could offer him in that factual space, because I was looking after current affairs, was making VT to the one show. And there's nothing wrong with making VT to the one show, but, you know, kind of 10 years later or whatever, 11 years later, he's series directing on Ambulance. And I think that kind of shows, illustrates how far we have come. We've got further to go. I mean, Channel 4 has moved to Leeds, um, Glasgow and Bristol as well. And we've got two commissioners in from fact, from Children's Specialist Factual base there. And, you know, we're based there because we want to discover diversity of voices and stories. And if Channel 4 is to survive, we all know that we have, you know, all channels need to be talking to the whole of the UK. Um, and like I say, you know, Will and Harji, the two factual uh, commissioners in Leeds, are, you know, solid commissioning power in the hands of two people who really care very passionately about the region and developing new talent. Um, you know, our ambition is to increase our factual output although Channel 4 doesn't have a breakdown of uh, quotas uh, in the way that the BBC does. And that's because we're a much smaller operation. We haven't got guaranteed income. So I couldn't sit here and say that we promised to spend X amount of money in the nations and regions, but we are obviously increasing our quotas outside. Uh, By 2023, I think we're at 35% now, and we voluntarily agreed to put that up to 50%. And what I would say about that 50% is that's the baseline that's not the target. We want to kind of, you know, achieve, you know, bigger targets than that. Um, So yeah, I don't know if you want to add anything else, Emily, at that point. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, like Channel 4, but, um, you know, for us, authentic portrayal in the regions, and especially, you know, and in the North, especially, is really important because it translates into, it's not just a tick box exercise, you know, it translates into viewing figures because it increases our engagement with the audience because they can sniff like a portrayal that's not authentic a mile off, you know, they and the best people to be, you know, coming up with those ideas, the best people to be making those ideas, you know, are those rooted in the regions. Um, You know, and BBC have, I mean, I can talk about the stats, you know, we have over 50% of our factual spend is in the nations and the regions we don't break it down for the north specifically but you know as you uh, we, but we um but as a lead for the for the north for the north and the midlands i know that there is like a huge drive to increase production in the north like, like Stuart was saying you know ambulance has been based in the northwest for two series that's and that's sort of created lots of training opportunities as well as um you know as, la- as well as kind of 
um, just general staffing, it's been an opportunity to sort of grow talent. And I think as broadcasters, we've got a responsibility not just to sort of create sustainable career pathways, but also and not just keep, you know, um, keep uh, talent in the, in the region, but also to find that talent and to promote and champion new talent. And um, I've been like a beneficiary of like new talent schemes for, like throughout my career. Like I'm from Leeds. Um, grew up in Leeds and I did you know I moved to London in 2002 um, to work in telly and I wish that I'd, you know I wish I'd been able to stay like Persephone staying like Harry staying so it's like a subject massively close to my heart creating those opportunities and it mm. represents you know and that's backed by you know it's backed by the leaders in the BBC so it's um so it's totally like what everybody wants to do and also, I feel that, so I think schemes have got a big part to play. I don't know if you want me to talk about the schemes that sort of we're doing then, um, that have been quite successful recently. But um, in terms of, I think it's worth mentioning. Yeah, I think if you can, I suppose. Yeah. Well, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I think the line's a little bit laggy. Um, I suppose, yeah, it'd be good to talk about two, two um, different, uh, oh yeah, the, the Northern Voices scheme and um, also go to the clip that um, Victoria's got, who's from a Leeds-based director. But I suppose I suppose throughout the this session, it'd be great to, to come up with some practical steps, I suppose, if you're an emerging filmmaker from Leeds, Manchester, Liverpool, Huddersfield, wherever, yeah. in terms of what you can actually do. So so with, with you, Victoria, first, and we'll, we'll go to uh, Emily, yeah. just so we can see the, yeah. the, the clip from uh, the Northern Voices scheme. I suppose if you're a young filmmaker and you want to end up um, producing the clip that we'll, we'll see now, I'll ask the question, then we can watch the clip, and then maybe before we can, you, um, sorry, can answer. Ben, before but, um, sorry, before you play the clip, can I just tell you, on Tuesday, I think okay. this again illustrates how far we've come on Tuesday night, um, I hope she doesn't mind me name checking it, but Kate Siney is a Leeds based um, series director that had a double bill on Channel 4. So at 9 pm, she had Educating Manchester, followed by the clip we're going to see now on Towers. And I think, you know, that's 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 a good news story. All right. Well, you, you've queued it in well. Let's watch the clip and then I'll ask the question. So tell me, um, Victoria, tell me a bit about the, the filmmaker behind that. Yeah, as I say, uh, Kate is a Leeds-based um, series director. I think she's been able to, um, certainly over the last five years, have a sustainable career and not have to take, you know, the go to London for those blue chip 9pm slots. And yeah, she um, she made uh, Educate Manchester and then that followed with this at 10pm on Tuesday night. And what's really great about that, Ben, I think... So it was a fast that... port to call. So, sorry, yeah. Emily. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, like, what's brilliant about that and about Kate is that between doing Educating Manchester and doing um, Alton Tower Stock, she made the, the BBC Three series for us, Breaking Fashion in Manchester, and she also directed the Grand Party Hotel in Liverpool. So I think it's about that kind of creating opportunities between all wow. broadcasters, which yeah. is going to enable that sustainability of career, which has been so tough before. Yeah. I suppose for both of you, you know, we've, we've had the question in, um, from somebody watching that says, um, how, have all the panellists been to university? Do you think it's necessary to have a degree in order to shoot documentaries? So I suppose if you're a young filmmaker trying to make it in, in Leeds or Liverpool, um, you know, what, what, what is the best process in, in, in regards to making that career happen? First of all, do you have to have gone to university? And then if you have a stellar idea, what do you do? Can they just reach out to you guys? Yeah, so, I mean, that's a really good question. I personally don't think you need to have gone to university. I don't think it harms you. Like, I think it's, you know, if you want to go to university, that's great too. I think it doesn't need to be a media degree. Personally, I don't really think so, because when I look at CVs, I look at lots of things, not just your degree. It's like your outside interests and obviously a degree, you know, you can have a history degree and then get into specialist factual. So, and I think, you, but personally, I don't really look at the degree. I look at, I look at, what your kind of what your of um your story is really and what your ideas i think ideas are really important because when i started out in telly i actually applied to be on an fg2 researcher scheme which is a fantastic scheme it's funded by different indies a bit like 
the Harry's experience, you get housed by an Indy, it's like an apprenticeship scheme, and it's topped up by Tom Ford, I think. Um, and uh, I didn't actually get on the scheme because I botched my um, application, apparently. And um, but one of the um, one of the execs, um, who is also from Leeds, um, when when a company down in London, and she liked what I'd written, basically my ideas, what I wanted to say with my stories. Um, and she gave me some work experience. And then I stayed there for like five years doing like Harry, you know, lots of different things, dipping my toe in lots of different aspects of production. So I think it's really good to contact, you know, to try and get on some of these schemes, which there are lots of. Um, we have some direct pitching schemes as well, which are really successful recently. So um, one of them is Sheffield Dockfest Pitch, which is open to anybody at any stage of their career. And it's all about finding authentic Northern stories to be told by Northern filmmakers. And what's great about that scheme is that you don't need to, yes, you don't need to have, um, you don't need to be director level. You can be director level, but you can be researcher level. And what we'll do is build a team around you to help you grow. So that's a Docfest pitch, and that can just be directly pitched in from individuals. Then there's the Northern Voices scheme, which Persephone um, has won a pit, brilliant pitch from. Uh, and that has started this year, and we're going to keep building on that. And that's a partnership between BBC Three and BBC England. Um, and, that's aimed at and that's aimed at Northern companies to help them develop ideas. So that, could, that was for any Northern company to pitch into. Um, and the four shortlisted get, got £5,000 to develop their ideas. But one really big key part of that was to prove that they would be giving opportunities to new talents. So, and on top of that, we have like a new director scheme at BBC Three. So I think BBC Three, for us at, at the B, BBC Three is very much the home of new talent. It's part of their DNA. I'm, I'm sure you know about that then, in terms of like championing like new talent and they'll give opportunities outside the schemes as well. So I think if you're a young, you know, if you're emerging talent, I think you should contact, you know, you can contact me for starters, if you're, you know, want some guidance. Um, I'll put my email address in a minute in the Q&A so you've got that. Um, but also you can contact, um, I think it's really good to get to know your local like indies in the region and let them know that you're, you know, you're passionate about making, making films. Um, I think it's really good to watch loads of telly because it's kind of surprising, like the amount of people that, I think don't watch, you know, if you want to get into telly, you should watch loads of telly and you should sort of make a note of the companies that are making the kind of telly you want to make and like directly and uh, directly email them and let them know why you like their why you like their output because I think there's nothing more flattering for an indie than to hear that you like their stories and what they and the, the output that they make. So there's lots of different ways. Anyway, I'm, I'm this is such a passion project for me. I literally could just go on and on and on. So you've got to stop me then. But um, <laughs> but yeah, Persephone um, is. Well, the, let's, although it's all interesting, let, let's watch yeah. let's watch a clip. Sorry. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Um, the, the, the struggles of a Zoom uh, chat is that we yeah. often overlap. But um, maybe let's watch the bricking it clip first, and then we can watch for uh, yeah. seven clip well, as I, we go. I, just, I watch the bricking it clip. It's great. It's, um, shall I just give a bit of an yeah, intro to it? Yeah. So, so there were four companies shortlisted um, for this pitch, and Button Down was one of them. Um, really, what's really great about this pitch as well is that we hadn't worked. I mean, in fact, we haven't worked with any of those companies before. So this was a really strong way of like widening our kind of supply base, but also just who's on our radar and the best ways to, just, uh, you know, to meet new companies. And we were so impressed with what Button Down came up with. And so that the audience, you all know what the brief was. It was, um, so obviously this is for BBC Three, it was for singles for BBC Three. Um, and it was, they wanted sort of stories from the regions, specifically the North that were authentic and, con and conveyed contemporary life for young people. So this is what Button Down came up with. So I love that clip. That's a, that's a good example of uh, authentic voices, isn't it? It's just just real, nice and raw. Yeah, and that's what BBC Three is so good at, I think, is that unfiltered, that unfiltered aspect. And just one more thing on that voices, that factual development scheme, which was really great was that um there was only one like there was the prize was one single but fiona was so impressed the con controller of uh, bbc3 with the caliber of the pictures that she commissioned three ideas and two of which were sync were series 
So that's going to be a series as well as another one from LA Factual about um, these fantastic Vietnamese nail boy, but the nail bar boys um, in Liverpool, actually. So um, I think that just, I mean, that just shows how brilliant that kind of pitch can be. You know, like those kind of guaranteed structured pitches as well as all the other commissioning that we do and you know the developing that we do and all the small indie funds that we do which we've doubled actually over covid with 60 companies now on the small indie fund getting one-to-one -one support from commissioners and funding to grow ideas because i think that's a big part of it isn't it it's about Is there much making sure that the ideas are grown in the region not just the staffing i think that's the thing mm. Is there much, um, you know, in terms of um, but, button down, for example, after they make that, you know, what what do you think their chances are of getting a follow up commission or a bigger series with the BBC, you know, so beyond, I suppose, um, the momentary scheme? Is there much follow through with the companies and, that, and that there's actually a, a pipeline there to get further commission? Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, we would be hoping that that would return that series. You know, it's something that we we're going to get more tra traction by doing series and by doing like and by having series return. So traction with the audience and traction with the indie, and it's about building that relationship. But so much, <clears throat> you know, in terms of like the new the new talent schemes, yes, they are a way of showcasing talent and shining a light. But it's also a way of building relationships and getting on your next job. So, you know, with the new director scheme that BBC Three does. You know we've got like you know you look back over the past three years those um directors and you know and, and quite impressively a lot of female directors actually and from different diverse backgrounds as well have gone on to do you know single got one Neve kennedy who's done a single for is for bbc4 and is now doing her first bbc2 single uh, we've got lizzie campton who did manchester bomb film which was rtf winning um, and is now going on and then they went on to do the Sally Challenge film for BBC Two. So it's very much a pathway. Um, but as you know, working with other broadcasters as well, that's what we need okay. to do. And that's what Vic's done brilliantly with the kind of with the TV talent forum. It's about sharing the intel about this talent and making sure that we can provide opportunities across the board. But yeah, the whole point of doing that factual development scheme is to that's make definitely. connections. G Okay, and um, Persephone, you've um, you've experienced this this scheme yourself, and I suppose you know a big a big thing about TV is that you know sometimes people can view it as you know it's, it's kind of um, passion projects, but beyond passion projects, it is a it's a career, isn't it, in which people need to make money and have viable career options and and have sustainable work. Um, so how how has like the the Northern Voices scheme helped you both with making that film for BBC Three, and then? kind of follow-up career opportunities that you've had as a consequence? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I've had quite a few opportunities with BBC. So I'd actually started off um, doing working on the scheme as a producer um, called Northern Docs, which was in partnership with BBC Three. Um, and off the back of that, we managed to actually make two 10-minute short films, um, one called Car Girls and one called Chicken Man. And that gave two young new filmmakers the opportunity to kind of share their ideas. Um, and that Northern Docs was basically all about kind of tackling structural barriers to the opportunities in the North. Um, it was a talent initiative um, and it was all about creative expression and allowing Northern voices to kind of speak and report and interpret the world um, for like national audiences. Um, so through that, I was, I, I gained two credits. And then off the back of that, um, Nasfim and Emily have pretty much been my champions to kind of push me forward to work on um, another short kind of film for social media um, on BBC's Facebook, which received quite a lot of views actually, um, I'm very proud of. Um, and that's, you've got a clip of that, so you'll be showing that soon. But that was a good opportunity for me to kind of work on something that was close to my heart. It's very much about me. Um, I directed it um, I worked with a team in Scotland to produce it and, um, it was, uh, to be honest, without that, I wouldn't really have had that opportunity to share my story. And then off the back of that, now I'm in a position where I've kind of won this commission uh, with Northern Voices, which I'm really grateful for. And I'm going to be working with a Leeds-based indie clockwork films to produce um, that 30-minute documentary um, next year. So it's given me that kind of 
sustainability to continue working in this career because I don't know if you know but I actually was going to leave the kind of media industry and go towards e-learning which I also mm. have a background in um so just having that opportunity having schemes like this really does enable you to kind of turn around and say you know what this is something that I love doing every day is different and I want to continue um so I can't emphasize how important some schemes like this are and have been for me on my journey Yeah, and it just gives you that opportunity, doesn't it? Because there's so much about it is um, is just getting your leg in the door, especially if you come from a an area, you know, like I, when I went into it, I didn't know anybody in TV, you know, I didn't even know what journalism was when I first did it as a degree. I just did terribly in college, so that was the one thing that I could get uh, into. But um, but it, I suppose it gives you that hope, that original hope that you can, you can do what you want. Yeah, of course. And um, being Should able we... to have access to... Um, commissioners like Nasfim um, within BBC3 and Emily is really beneficial actually because it allows you to have those kind of open honest conversations about where they see that where they see you and where they see you develop into and kind of as talent that's really important to kind of know how to present yourself what your kind of opportunities could be um, and having these schemes actually gives you that um, whereas usually you wouldn't necessarily get a chance to meet a commissioner or sit down with them so it's just about creating those opportunities and I think that's a practical step going forward allowing those conversations to happen. Should we watch your clip then so this is um, a clip you did last year uh, for BBC3 uh, about your life. And Stephanie, um, a lot of we're getting a lot of questions in from people asking specifically how you um, how they get something commissioned or how they get that initial opportunity. Um, can you give me, a, a, I suppose, a sense of how you got that opportunity with the BBC three with BBC three? Who did you speak to? You know, how did that come about? Yeah, so to be honest, that was off the back of working um, with an indie called Riverhorse, um, who produced the Northern Dock scheme with BBC three. Um, Continuing on with that, I had a lot of meetings. I went up to London and um, had a lot of Zoom calls. We spoke with Emily and Nasfim um, quite extensively about how that scheme was going to develop and then what we could do afterwards. And I kind of just built up a rapport with Nasfim. She's pretty much been my mentor and she is doing a, a bit of mentoring with me at the moment as well. Um, and it was just about having those conversations with her and seeing, well, is this something that I can do? Um, and then Nasfim had naturally spoken to um, the director of River Horse and said, look, there's an opportunity here. I think Stephanie would be great for it. Um, and she, it's all because she had me in her head that, you know, I have talent, I can make something, I've got a, a good story behind me, um, so let's make something out of it. Um, and then from then on, she introduced me to teams across uh, the BBC Scotland team, and we worked on producing that together. And then I just went out and filmed it. So that was really my experience of getting that commissioned. Um, and then just being on their radar has enabled me to have access to kind of like the, the Northern Voices um, scheme um, a pitch that they did basically the zoom call that they did and um, where they sent out the email and they introduced us and they allowed us to have access to um pitching to them our ideas um, and then even then nasfim had introduced me to indies within the north which she thought that i would pair up really well with um, so it's very much about networking keeping yourself available um being instant on your emails <laughs> don't let them go to your junk and just keep keep going forward keep pushing Um, Stuart and Harry, I'm going to come to you in a sec just to hear a bit about your stories. But, but first, Victoria, I suppose a lot of these um, stories of how people made it and, and kind of myself included often come from, say, a mentor or a commissioner who, who's taken a liking to you and, and maybe helped you out. Um, how important do you think it is to have um, commissioners based in the north who are representative of the areas they are in? Um, because I think that's potentially one of the downsides of the industry is that, you know, commissioners have a lot of power and influence and, and you know, human psychology suggests we often, you know, may, may inadvertently commission things that we're used to. So how important is representation when it comes to getting Northern filmmakers? Um, I'm, I'm really proud of the hires that we've made um, in Leeds, um, in the factual space um, with Will. I'm sure most of you will know Will, he, you know, he's freelancer, even though he's a Watford, season ticket holder 
He has been in Leeds for the last, I don't know, 20 odd years. Um, so we can't hold that against him. Um, and so he's been up working at all the Leeds Indies. He came to Manchester every now and again when I can get him down there, um, you know, making stuff for me at the BBC. Um, but, you know, he's somebody who, who, who knows the local talent and therefore can champion the local talent too. You know, the thing about having a sustainable career in docks outside of London is, you know, kind of that, um, the fear of people in London looking at CVs that may be a bit more eclectic in the nations and regions as they are in London, because in, in, in outside of London, you almost have to be able to turn your hand to anything to keep the money coming in and keep going from project to project. You might just want to do docks, but you might have to take a features gig in between, you know, waiting for that next, you know, ambulance to come along or whatever. And I think there's been, there has been a, a, a nervousness about those types of CVs for people that have been solely based in London. I think certainly what's helped with us is Harji, the other commissioner, is Bradford born and bred. 12 years ago, didn't think he could have a sustainable career outside of London, moved to London, got some great credits down there. But then, you know, I interviewed him for the job alongside other people. And, you know, we were just blown away by his absolute dogged determination to come back and, and, and kind of work with, you know, kind of the people that he grew up with and telling those stories in a way that, you know, I, I, you know, I know that Emily does a brilliant job and is Northern based, or not, but, but from and, and is passionate about telling those northern stories. But I think having a, a visible base in a northern city has had a real impact. You know, I speak to the Indies frequently, and you know, I think having you know somebody based up here, um, you know, from a northern background is helping them to kind of get where they need to get. I, I mean, I, t I totally agree, Vic, and I think that. Like before COVID, I was making a conscious effort because I kind of we I got this I got the opportunity to lead for the team for the North and the Midlands, and I knew that the only way to really build with regional indies is to be there. So I'd go up every month to Manchester, to Leeds, to Birmingham, and do one to ones. Obviously now with COVID, actually we're all zooming anyway. So like if there are indies watching and you haven't been getting one to ones with me or you haven't made a connection, then just I've put my email address in the chat so you can do that because the only way is to build that relationship and to really get to know people face to face. Um, but also just worth saying that we work a lot in factual with BBC England, who are based obviously in the region and um a lot with Tony Parker, who's like head of development for BBC England, and we're partnering up quite a lot on new commissions. So the Northern Voices thing was with BBC England um, and we're doing another BBC Two um, pitch for a new series um, with BBC England, an 8pm BBC Two series, which is an open brief to all indies in the North for a guaranteed series of eight parts. Um, so email me if you don't know about that and um, there's a briefing about that next week. But the point being that I totally agree we need to be in, in the region talking to indies um, so I'm very much wanting to do more of that. Yeah, and I do, th you touched on mentors as well. And I think uh, Channel 4 have got a brilliant um, commissioner mentor scheme where we partner up freelancers with commissioners, you know, all, uh, you know, whichever hub in London, um, anywhere. And they spend six months um, kind of having, you know, six meetings across those months. And what, ha you know, what happens is then, you know, when that gig comes up, they really know that person and can champion them to whoever they need to champion to get them signed off if it's getting them into an edit and they've not had an edit before. Um, so I, I think mentoring is incredibly important as well. Stuart, I'd love to ask you a couple of questions. So you are um, pretty established talent. You've made um, some um, amazing things, including big band series like Ambulance, um, 24 hours in A&E and, &E and, you, and um, the so what, what what's it like for you you know for me as a as a filmmaker who still I, I mix between London and Liverpool I've I actually have my own company now I'm making some stuff through that um, the plan is to move to Liverpool and properly set up a base there but it still is quite a, a crazy idea just uh, I think I'm traumatized from when I originally started and there was just kind of not, well, there wasn't so many opportunities Give us a sense of what it's like for you, you know, senior filmmaker, kind of what's your work like now? What's it like on a, on a daily basis and how easy is it to get work? 
Yeah, well, I mean, I, I remember, but I always remember before I moved from London, I remember being in the pub in London just before I like, was talking about moving and someone said, oh God, it's career suicide if you move north, you know, they sort of said to me. Um, and I think, you know, I think that when, I mean, when I first moved, I definitely, like, picking up on what Vic made a really good point about the diversity of CVs that you sort of tend to get here. And I think it's good to kind of reinforce that because you will get people that work on a bit more kind of diverse stuff um, and you do find because there's less things, but there can be kind of right, right, real positives to that. I mean, I remember we were <clears throat> crewing up on something and I was in, interviewing researchers and they all had Jeremy Kyle on them. And I was kind of like, oh, Jeremy Kyle. Like, but then, you know, when we got our kind of casting team, work, the work ethic from those researchers, like I've never seen anything like it. And, I, and also really kind of good sense, you know, sensitivities and stuff. Um, I know people that have gone on to work on like One Born and Birth for the BBC and really kind of good doc series and I would absolutely kind of hire and, um, you know, want to work with. And um, so I think it's been aware of that. I know also editors, you know, I think we can talk about edits, but um, I had a kind of someone with a kind of sports background that we kind of really liked and was involved. And actually they've gone on to work on Ambulance and um, 24 Hours in A&E. Um, and I haven't worked on 24 Hours in A&E. I just referenced it as something that's kind of coming up here. Um, but they, you know, when you get a reg with all these, you know, oh, editors, right, but that's no, right. But, we, you know, the, the sports editor, they're just so quick, you know, you just give them the reg and they're like, yep, next, you know, they just fly through it. Um, but if you actually meet them and sort of actually understand their sensibilities, and I think that working up here when it comes to kind of crewing up and especially with edits, you know, I think when I'm, I think there is work around, I think there is a bit more, but um, uh, I'm a bit more open to sort of diversifying on things. Like I have done things with a slightly more kind of fact end kind of like twist them over the years. Um, but it doesn't, it feels like there is more doc stuff kind of kicking around. Um, I'm doing a BBC documentary at the moment about a kind of Northern Council that I'm series directing. And what's um, and that's going to have, um, you know, that's a kind of regional um, output. Um, I'm not filming with the King in the North, uh, Andy Burnham, just so you, just to be clear, because <laughs> that's what yeah, everyone keeps asking me. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so I think you know, I think it's just being a bit more open-minded. But sometimes what's I think... the actual structuring of it like? Um... Do you do, um, so are you doing the edits as well in, in Manchester or, you know, has that been a problem in regards to that? Obviously depends. aspects of the filmmaking is done there and the rest is outsourced? It depends. I think that historically and certainly when I first kind of came up here, I think it felt like there was a feeling that, you you know, it was tough to do the edits up north. I think that's fair to say. Um, and I think that that has changed that's the one thing that I've really sort of seen a difference in and I think part of that is my personal experience because when I first moved from London then I would get offered lots of London work you know because if there was a London commission and they were filming up north and they knew that I was up here then obviously they sort of knew me so therefore I'd benefit from that but then the edits would be down south um, and that always felt a bit kind of you know I felt like I was cheating on the north a little bit sometimes <laughs> you know or the industry and I think these days I do feel like um, I have a kind of, not responsibility, but I think if there's a big series and it's like, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm sort of only really interested in if the edit's up here. And I will say that kind of quite, you know, straight these days if I'm talking to people about work. Um, because, you know, we did Ambulance. I, there was a series made in Manchester. I think they made eight um, Manchester episodes. I was involved in 12 Ambulance episodes, the majority of which, I think there was only one edit that was down in London. There was a training scheme kind of going on, but, the, you know, the production base was in Manchester. The edits were in Manchester. Um, and so there is plenty of, you know, that's not the case anymore. There is plenty of, you know, editing talent. Um, and I think that for, you know, for big series to land in the north, I think are really important. And I think if they are working, then backing those, because essentially, you know, I do believe in training schemes. I think they are, you know, listening to what Harry was sort of saying about the opportunities he's getting to do lots of things. I did a RDF internship when I first got into television and I got to kind of get my hands on lots of stuff and having a company that sort of, it's like a kind of safe space, isn't it? To kind of try stuff, I think is brilliant. There's a, um, there's a term that I actually didn't even, I never heard in my life prior to this, um, researching this, but lift and shift is supposedly a term that is used to describe moving big brand series out of London and into the regions. <laughs> and you've worked on those, um, some of those big brand series. How important do you think that is in terms of building like the actual infrastructure for companies to be able to make, you know, reasonable amounts of, reasonable amounts of money to create actual job opportunities in that area, um, to, to bringing some of these bigger productions and, and, and crewing them up in, in, and potentially making them out to northern companies. 
Yeah, I mean, I think they're really important. And, you know, clearly it's important to be um, commissioning and having um, things coming from regional indies, you know, absolutely. Um, but I think when you've got something like Ambulance that then comes up north and you're, mis you know, you're, I think, was it the Liverpool series when that went out, there was like five million plus people watched one, you know, the episode. I mean, you're talking, you know, it's a really successful series and we're really all really proud of it. And, it, you know, it's a, nor it's a proper Northern product. So I think what that does is then, you know, it's a big old series ambulance. You know, you can, I think at one point we've got kind of nine directors working on it at any given time. You've got all these edits going on, you know, 12 edits. And it just, I think it kind of like, it almost breathes confidence into the kind of like freelance ecosystem up here because the next time that person's then trying to get a commission or is then trying to work on something, it's like, oh wait, you know, they worked on a big heavyweight factual series that everybody kind of knows. And so, and, and they, as I say, there's always going to be somebody who gets an opportunity on that. Like it might, you know, there's, when we were clearing up for Ambulance, there were editors that you meet and you who are going to hire immediately. And there's other people that you sort of meet and you go, well, oh, your CV is slightly different, but I really like you. You know, you just get a good feel from them and a good kind of vibe from them. Um, and then actually they've gone and, you know, gone and do a fantastic job. You know, all of our, you know, all of our editors did a brilliant job on Ambulance. Um, and so, and therefore, then I know some of them are now going off to kind of work on uh, 24 hours and e, e and other things. And, you know, the projects I'm now doing, I'm like, oh, God, I can't get the people that I've like totally brought, in, you know, brought to work on ambulance. But that's that's great. And, you know, so what Educate Manchester was up. Um, so, yeah, I think I think they are important. So if there's something like that, then I think backing it like really like, um, you know, I think ambulance is coming back up to the northwest. Um, I'm not involved in it anymore, but I believe it's kind of coming back and there's another big kind of weighted commission coming back into the, the Northwest and having a Northern base. And I think those things are really important, really important. I think the volume is really important, isn't it? It's about just a high volume series. Yeah. yeah. And also because you get to work, you know, you Sorry. work with lots of talented people, you, do, you know, because whereas, uh, you know, on a single document, you know, and I know as a director, you know, if you're the director and you're just making something small, like, it's you you know that's it you work on a big series and that's one of the, the joys of working on a big series is you get to work with all these other kind of talented people and mm -hmm. kind of learning from each other and you know you there's always something you can kind of pick up from other people and that's uh, important i think that's important in certainly kind of manchester leeds where there are maybe a handful of you know dot makers that are really well known to you know the big blue chip london indies you know if they're making anything in manchester or leeds they'll come to Stuart or you know a few others and I think it's really important that you know when Ambulance comes back you know that it'd be two or three series that they've made up here and having that commitment to it not just being a one-off that you know there's another series coming behind it means that Stuart can champion the younger DV director that might have got his gig that might have been a bit of a I don't know a risk you know and so you know that, that having people like Stuart pushing through, pulling through that next generation of DV directors, PDs, I think is really important as well. Can I just say as well, I think it's really important to stress, like a lot of freelancers seem to think, oh, you know, I've got to focus on this one route, I've got to stay in documentaries, but actually being able to have a varied CV can help you so much. Um, I know for myself, I have a journalistic background, um, but I've kind of gone down the route of producing, um, but employers have definitely seen that as a positive uh, rather than a compromise, if anything. I mean, I, because of that, I was kind of brought on to work on Tesla Clock Show for Channel 4, um, and that was just because of my fact-checking abilities um, and my journalistic background. And then from then on, I worked on Steph's show Pilot, and then from then on, I got Steph's Pat's Lunch. So it just goes to show how being able to actually put your CV out there and say, yes, fine, I've not stuck to the traditional mm. route of things. I've actually done a variety of things in front of the camera, behind the camera, in print, um, producing can really work in your favour and it's not something that you should be fearful of at all and if anything I would also encourage commissioners and um, employers and um, organisations to look at varied CVs as advantageous rather than a compromise. Yeah 100% it should be celebrated the CVs that we you know you see outside of London now aren't as scary to commissioners if they're outside of London because they've almost got those CVs themselves and they know and they can kind of tell that story they can read they can read CVs in a way that you know, mm -hmm. if, if, if you're not used to seeing 
those types. It's more difficult. Yeah, and that, that's something I definitely have learned from just to pick up on what Bruce Burton was saying, the, having a more varied CV, because a lot of people don't realize that making ambulance, it's almost like working on a live show because mm -hmm. essentially you've got a shift. You're telling the story of a shift as it goes. So you're almost kind of filming as live in a kind of weird way because you're not moving around jobs to sort of put your best program together. You're starting a shift and then you're watching it sort of work going in real time so we used to always kind of like joke up that was a kind of like term we talked about on ambulance and so if you've got a kind of live you know live experience and then you come on a series like that that's going to be really good you know that's really you know going to be really helpful and then but every series is slightly different and there's different you know pros and cons that come from lots of things so I think a bit of, a bit of variety is a good thing actually just like I've you know I did a lot of kind of formatted docs when I was you know in London coming through so my first researcher job was secret millionaire and then made lots of series of the choir and you know things were basically you've got seven days to make a program so you have you know you can't just go and film for days on end and try and work it's like you have to go and get something and you have to kind of deliver very quickly um, and a lot of good program makers you know a lot of good kind of factual people have come came through that route back then um, and I think it's a really good discipline so I think there are lots of kind of pros that can come from a more diverse CV 100%. It's interesting as well, because I think you've got to, rather than if you don't necessarily want to kind of diversify, diversify your CV, you've got to be willing to diversify your CV, because the reality is that in the North, you don't have as many opportunities as you do in London, for example. So like I could potentially go into, um, I won't use your Facebook group, um, Victoria, because you're absolutely amazing. Um, and I absolutely love it. Honestly, I'm continuously inviting people into that group. Um, but other groups that I've been a part of prior to yours, they've been like maybe one or two opportunities a month that I think, oh, okay, I can develop my documentary um, expertise here. Um, whereas if I dip into like a London production crew group, it, it could be like 15 a day, which is absolutely ridiculous when you think of it. Um, so just being able to say to yourself, do you know what, actually, I'm going to go turn my hand at magazine format shows, or I'm going to turn my hand at entertainment, is something that you have to be able to say yes to um, and just face the reality of. And just to, um, I mean, a lot, a lot of this, I suppose, comes down to the, you know, opportunities for work for individuals essentially comes down to the commissioners and the controllers of channels being willing to stump up the money for companies in northern regions to actually fund uh, individuals to work on their projects. So I suppose a lot of that comes down to people like yourselves, Emily and Victoria. So I suppose historically and also today, because, you know, there still is a, a there still is less documentaries being made in the north than there are in London, for example. Why is it, do you feel, that um, companies in the north pitching an idea are, are maybe seen as, as less than, than their London counterparts? Why are commissioners not prepared to put as big as a, a bet on them as they are to companies based in London? Well, I, just, I think that's quite, I don't think that's really true. Like, certainly we are hunting and seeking, you know, opportunities to work with northern companies. We are desperate for it. We want it. I think that perhaps what we need, you know, and some of our most exciting commissions recently, I'm thinking about the Idris Elba Fight School from Workerby in Manchester, like prime time, brilliant, talent led series coming out of Manchester. Um, I think that, so I, I think that, that we definitely are and we want to. And I think the best way of doing that is, as I said before, like a volume of ideas. It's not easy to get a commission. like anywhere like it's not an easy thing so but I think the best way of doing it is creating a dialogue having a volume of ideas no you know nobody can have like the first idea you pitch won't get commissioned but that's why we are and we understand that for small indies you know that is you know development is expensive you need a lot of resources so that's why we've been investing more in the small indie fund we've got 60 companies based in the north on that scheme um and as I said just um you know, email me if you want to get a one-to-one -one in and let's just get a dialogue going. Um, but we definitely, you know, we want to commission more in the North and it's about getting the right ideas for the channel. But ultimately, that is, you know, that's what we're doing and that's what we want. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, and then, they, you know, there are schemes like specifically for the North, which is um, the one that we're briefing out next week, which is this BBC Two, BBC England partnership. Um, which is an eight-part series and that and that is only for northern companies but it's what i'm sorry i don't mean northern companies that is for all the english regions and then so there are there are opportunities just for the different nations and regions but that there's nothing to prohibit companies in the north pitching into just general commissioning um 
but if you're in any doubt about how to do that or what's the best path or what the best do you think path, the um, email me so so for example some of the pictures that were commissioned off the back of the northern voices scheme do you think they would have been commissioned through conventional routes say someone emailed you uploaded it to bbc pitch waited for you to go to a routine have a conversation would they have been given the same credence do you think yeah definitely they would but i think that there was a focus with that which was really nice because it focused everybody on one brief so that was kind of a nice way of doing it but i think that absolutely i mean i've We've not worked with Button Down before, but I've met them before on a one-to-one. -one. But I think there's something quite nice about having a focused brief. You know, I think we could look at that more, like having more focused brief and being clear with our briefing, what we're looking for at specific times, because we do have a rolling commissioning system, which I think works because it keeps the opportunity going all year round. But, um, but I think there was something very special about that focus of the brief, and I think we can build on that, definitely. Can I, can I just add about development as well? I think it's really, there are um, yeah. very few people outside of London that see development as a, as a, as a career, as a full-time job. Um, I think outside of London, you can, there's that volume of indies for people to move around, work with new people, kind of, you know, you, you're working alongside somebody else that inspires another idea. And, you know, we've got lesser indies here. We've got people, wrongly or rightly, that, take development jobs as a bit of a filler and they don't see it as a as a real a real career opportunity and I think maybe that you know kind of shows itself in some ways I think for Channel 4 and for our commissioners uh, well Will and Harji the holy grail for them is finding that 9pm returnable series out of Leeds or Manchester or the north and um, wherever it might come from so you know that's something that is a number one priority for them yeah I mean, I think we're then in terms of, we've got we've got a couple of questions. Sorry, we've got a couple of questions um, coming in, and then I want to get to Harry because we haven't actually heard from Harry. Um, sorry, Harry. Um, but originally, so in terms of, so we've got a question from Isaac Maddock James. So he's a he's a postgraduate filmmaker with a fully completed forty minute documentary film. So what? what do you think is the best way for somebody who has the film they want to potentially get it to air somewhere um, and create a career for themselves what's his best move now so, and that's open to anybody Stuart you can jump in as well but certainly feel free Harry yeah or just just from a sort of um broadcast from the BBC point of view we don't we actually don't I mean my factual team don't really deal with acquisitions so if the film's already made that's not really our remit but we do have an acquisitions team so you know we could you could email them i think it's quite a good it might be a good calling card you know it's a good thing to say i've made this film i want to make more you know and use that as a kind of in and sort of what how would you want to build on that film would you like to do something similar um i do really think it's really important to work in indies like and you know we're more likely i mean i'm really we're really happy to like meet filmmakers and there are certain pictures like I said the doc best pitch but most of the time in terms of commissioning we commission via the indie so I would try and find a home like Harry's done and find a company that you really like to work with and and work with them and try yeah. and build just your, 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 your tool set and your skills in an indie. I was just going to add to that with my sort of way into where I am now was sending my graduate film so that was like the yeah sent my CV which is great and everyone sees CVs all the time but if you've got like the physical here's a film I've shot it I've edited it you know it wasn't amazing it didn't I've not put it into any festivals or anything but it was something that my boss could then see and go oh look he's done this this and this let's take a punt uh Stuart was saying even though it's in a different field maybe should we take a take a chance on someone and mine was look I've done this it's sort of similar to what you're doing can I have a go at it and that was definitely my way in my, like big part of it so for that I don't know what stage of career they're at but that would be maybe a brilliant thing just to put it together yeah. and then not package I mean, that, and send it around. That, that, that was also my way in, in, in TV. I'd made a documentary about Iranians living in Los Angeles and then sent it to BBC World Service randomly and had to start in radio to move my way into documentaries originally, so you have to be pretty flexible. But Harry, I suppose give me give me a bit more of a sense of your story because you, you are full-time at Kanda, am I right? So you have that kind of stability as well? Yes, uh, yeah, year, year to year, but year contracts, but pr pretty much full time um, and have been. So yeah, my was my way in was went to uni and did a filmmaking degree, um, which was great. 
Um, but I think, you know, someone asked earlier, do you have to go to uni and do a degree? Even though I did, maybe it's hypocritical, but I would say no, because I, I do know other people that have, have not got degrees. But the main thing I got from the degree was obviously a basic understanding of how to make film, but it was definitely the connections. And um, Persephone said, you know, getting, getting your voice out there or getting on the radar is what you said. And I think that's absolutely it. I think it, I could, you know, the money was worth anything. It was just meeting a couple of people that could put me in touch with a company and just say, this is someone that, you know, we trust or we know. Um, and then, like I said, I sent my film in and started doing work experience. So I think, you know, what I can maybe champion my my little input is definitely, you know, do a little bit of work for free because not not all the time, you know, don't get taken advantage of, but often it is for a reason and you can do a little bit for free and then some will maybe give you that paid job. So mine was a bit of work experience for free uh, for a couple of months, you know, maybe one day a week I think I was doing. And then I got onto a scheme and then I'll, you know, champion schemes all day long because it was something that I could then get paid to be there. It wasn't a lot of money and that's not a problem at all because all you need to be getting paid to do, if it can cover your rent, mine covered my rent and enabled me to just do that full time. That was it. I, you know, it was not moaning at all that it was quite a low amount of money at the time. Um, but it's only for a short amount of time. So if you can take the hit or maybe you had a better job, but if you can just do one scheme or something that can get you in the door, quickly you'll progress is from what what I've seen anyway and that's that's what I would push just because that's that was my way in mm. I mean so that, that's kind of the, the biggest key question we have coming on the Q&A which is always the case yeah. you know it's like how, how do you get in there what, what do you do and how do you get to the point where uh, you're given an opportunity because I suppose that is what's so hard isn't it especially at that initial point if you're living in in Leeds, for example, and, and, and you know your your dad doesn't wasn't the director general of the BBC. You know it's it's a bit complicated sometimes to to get that initial foot up. So what? So you you know you made a documentary. You you know you emailed a lot of people. You know how much work experience did you do prior to getting involved with yeah. Panda? Um, I done some work experience on dramas, which was good just to see a diff the different side of it. I've done a bit of locations work experience that actually got me a little bit of work, work, actual paid work on that as well, which was just unexpected. But I think it's just making those connections and then you, you might get offered a, a job. It might not be in the exact field you want, but through that you go, you bounce along. You said you started in radio and then moved around and it's just, you, if it's in a related field, it's so much easier, isn't it? To, to meet those people. Um, so sorry what was the question again it was just getting a sense of your your kind of beginnings a bit more i mean there's there's a really interesting question that's come in which i think is often um often ignored potentially which is that um you know do, do you think there's a bit of a north north divide you know if you're based around manchester leeds liverpool sheffield you know there's arguably more opportunity than if you're from Newcastle or, or Middlesbrough or, or Sunderland and, and um, do you get the sense that if you live elsewhere um, in the north it can be a bit trickier and, and that the focus is Manchester I, and Leeds? I, I think that is undeniably an issue that we need to work on I think I'd like you know I think we've spoken about this before you know I probably with Vic I'm, you know we can work together I think we need to be sort of targeting like the northeast particularly in, and building opportunities there and essentially we need more production companies in the northeast and you know i know that the best way to do that is through commissioning you know we need to provide the opportunities in mm. the northeast and that's you know we're, so we're definitely looking at that and how we can do that yeah, just putting a little plug in for TV Talent North. We've got Indies and representation of Indies all the way up. I think the furthest we go is York. But, uh, you know, if there are Indies further north of that, and I'm, I'm sure there are, you know, we'd love for them to be part to be part of the group and giving people, you know, access to, to the jobs that they might have available to freelancers. Yeah. And Persephone, as... Um... As someone based in Huddersfield, having to deal, you know, with um, quite powerful people in the media, how, what what's it like for you in, in terms of um, feeling as though you're talking to people who understand your world? You know, that, that was kind of one of the interesting things when I started out. You know, I went straight into the BBC World Service, and it was an amazing place to learn how to be a journalist. But like, 
there was not a lot of young Scouse lads who have Iranian heritage and et cetera, et cetera. And obviously you can't expect people to be exactly the same as you, but, um, but do you feel as though people get, you know, the life of, of someone from Huddersfield and, uh, and when you're working with commissioners in London? Um, whether or not we can relay um, is a question that I've kind of pondered before. Um, but to be honest, I think that we're all human at the end of the day. We all have kind of common interests, common um, grounds that we've got to find, we've got to explore. And I actually think that being from the North has given me kind of a unique selling point. Um, I, I use it, there's been times when I've tried to change my accent, I've tried to fit in a little bit more, but actually that's not worked in my favour. Being yourself is like the best way forward. And I think that being able to be myself just brings out the best in me as well in what I can do and what I can create. And I think that giving advice to kind of people who are from the north it is about just being confident in what your story is your roots are and who you are and um, for me as well obviously not only am I from the north I'm from a black background well mixed background um, I'm Muslim now and um, so it's been kind of like finding that way to kind of move forward and share who I am and be confident with that and it's a real question around my identity but actually the Northern Voices scheme um, the next year as you see when, when I start working and producing this is going to give me that opportunity to look actually into that but beyond that and put myself forward as a producer rather than an AP and just actually be able to step up so I think that's that's really important um, I'm not sure that quite answered your question but I, I I just cannot stress enough how important like being yourself is in terms of developing ideas and making films. And for, for us in commissioning, we want to be speaking to development teams with have got with, with authentic voices in them coming up with those ideas. So I know we're talking about filmmaking and making the films, but as Vic said, like it's really important that the development teams have got that diversity of voice there as well and you know that that's what we want so i really if there are indies that are watching now as well i just think just want to make sure that point has landed that we really there's nothing greater than when i go and visit a team and i can see a whole diversity of representation there and that because that, that comes through in the ideas and that's what audiences will respond to ultimately and um, that's what we need And then we haven't actually got too long left, uh, amazingly enough, but I think it, it would be nice to try and, um, I mean, nice and maybe impossible, but to try and get a sense of, of a unanimous uh, agreed platform for how you encourage more talent from the North and make sure that they are able to stay in their communities and have a, a kind of wide range of, of work. Uh, and Stuart, I suppose, as a, um, as a Scottish man, he went to London and went to Manchester, um, what are your kind of tips, both for commissioners and for filmmakers, for making kind of a better environment in in places like Manchester for for filmmakers? Um, well, uh, certainly for commissioner, I think I'd just reinforce what I said about you know the edits and really supporting the the opportunity when there's an opportunity for a series to genuinely kind of be cut up north and and quite often if you're getting that from commissioner level or from channel level that are saying no we want these edits to be in the north then the indie will respond you know they will then make it so um, um and sort of like sticking to your guns on that and if you are getting you know if thing if thing is successful then really backing it you know and making it returnable i mean i'm not saying like recommissioning for the sake of it but if it's something is good and doing well then that is you know that that is a really important thing not just for as a series but actually just i just want to you know reinforce just how much that really breeds confidence into an industry and that is like a training scheme really i think that's the point that i would like to kind of reinforce yeah so you're right totally agree and me and emily uh, talked uh, uh, before this about um pan broadcast you know broadcasters coming together to tackle some of the issues and I think we already work with the BBC um, kind of funding similar schemes so the series producer scheme through screen skills there's a factual fast track um, for kind of series producers in Wales that we do with the BBC as well and I think more of that yeah. more of broadcasters coming together and working together to tackle the issues yeah, yeah. And I would, I would be really interested to, what I'd like to do more of is explore 
other funding options as well. And, and I know that, you know, with the Northern Voices Scheme, so the equivalent of that in Scotland and Northern Ireland had Screen Scotland, Screen yeah. Northern Ireland contribution which just means it can be bigger and we can do more and I know that it's tricky in in the regions because there's not one major main body you know and there's lots of people doing lots of brilliant things but I would be you know I'd like to explore that more and try and you know we've got a line we've all got a joint vision we know what we want to do we want to build more sustainable careers in the region and we so I think it's just trying to find a way of kind of pooling some of that resource as well. Yeah, and I, just on what I, on that, the um, I think the cost to say a broadcaster that could maybe provide a training scheme, like the one I got, was sort of a charity thing actually. So it was actually indies all pulled in, and actually that's what how I got paid to be on the scheme. But I think if broadcasters like yourselves could, you know, make the schemes or part fund them, I know there are some that are part funded. I think the the cost to the channel is such a small amount for the investment that they'd probably get with someone that would then develop into a career. Um, a career, sorry, that um, where you could do all the different different aspects and different different areas of, of production, like I've done. So that's, that's what I'm championing. Is that feasible? Do you think, um, Emily and Victoria, or are, are the broadcasters willing to to kind of put money into training people who are parts of production companies in the north? Yeah, I'm absolutely. Sorry, go on. Yeah, sorry. I was going to say we do we do that. We um, invest in Indie Lab. We invest in and um, the supervisor program with TRC, like we were saying, skills and screen skills and skill set. And I think that, but I think we could do more, like we could look at more. But as that, um, Stu said, I think, obviously I, I come from commissioning and, you know, content, got to produce content with the license fee. Um, but I think if we can commission smartly in volume, that's a great training ground. But it, I, I, I know what, what you're saying, it, is, has, it does have to be we're in volume and sort of has to, to create that sense of confidence and certainty around it. So I think we can we can do things with content um, as well in terms of training is what I'm trying to say. And uh, Channel 4 just uh, kind of announced their four skills. Okay. Um, and then in... Persephone, oh sorry Victoria, go on. No, it's all right, I was just in full flow then. Um, so the Channel 4 uh, soon will <laughs> announce their production training scheme um, which is where Channel 4 fund um, a cohort of 12 um, next year. And that, those 12 are it's nations and regions focused and they spend 12 months with an indie um, and it's kind of like a fast track. So they've hardly got any experience. And at the end of that 12 months with an indie in the nations and regions, they're able to uh, kind of apply for junior research researcher roles and Channel 4 pay 50% of the salary. Um, and I just want to make a point as well. I don't forget about this RTS and they've got their trainee scheme as well. They've got quite a few bursaries and I'm working with them to place those trainees onto productions. Because I think what we can do in content as well is just making sure getting people connected and making sure that they know about regional productions and we can suggest people to go and do you know paid work experience or paid jobs on those on those productions. So it comes back to those connections as well and sharing intel sharing opportunities the tv talent you know vix talent um, facebook um forum is brilliant for that but it's all talking together and just trying to maximize all the opportunities with indies who do a brilliant job as well of course of um sort of nurturing that talent and it's all it's incumbent on all of us i think to nurture that talent because there's investment human investment isn't it for the for the future of the industry in the region you know what additionally i think it would be quite nice. i think it would be quite yeah, you nice. beat me to it <laughs> i think it would be quite nice if there was a way to kind of what you notice as well is a lot of the time london um crew come to work in the north um on northern documentaries so if there would be a way to kind of marry them two together and if you are say for example a northerner who is working with a london-based indie can you shadow or can you work with closely with somebody in more of a senior position to help get trained up quite quickly i know even for like for hometown um majority were were from london the crew and um, but I saw Mabeen, Nasreen kind of let me know that they were filming in Hoodsfield. I saw Mabeen who presented it um, on a street in my area. And I literally just wound out my window and I was like, hi Mabeen, um, this is who I am. Can I work with you? And then I put in an email and that's how I got that role pretty much. But being on that team, one thing that I learned is that 
um, working with the producers who have come from London, they were a lot more experienced with me in terms of like technical things, rigging things up. And that was the experience that I kind of craved and would have loved to have that training. Um, and equally as well, if you are um, continuously commissioning indie, um, indies to produce massive uh, documentaries in London, series series in London, that maybe there's a way of looking at bringing somebody from the North or people from the North to London to actually work on those series as well um, and training them up there. I think yeah. it kind of needs a bit of both, marrying yeah. up both. I think that's a really good idea. And I think that's like worked really well on Ambulance, as Stuart was saying, I think. But that model, I think we could roll it out across more series and bring more series to the north, I think, which is what we want to be doing. The big brands that we know work, and then, yeah, as well as new commissions in the, in the region. Great. Yeah, Great. Not <laughs> well, I think that's a good place to, to wrap it up. Thank you very much. We actually, uh, I think we overran. That's how interesting the conversation was. But um, but I really appreciate your time. I uh, hope everybody who watched it enjoyed it. Uh, I think we have some of the links to the things that we referred to in the um, in the chat section of Zoom if you can navigate your way there. And uh, thank you for all the questions as well. See you, um, see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye.